Hello viewers, my name is Adam. And I'm Aaron. This is Seeking Me Productions, bring you another movie review. So we saw Creed 3. So on this channel, um, with our very first video that we ever did, mm. where we was discussing the best and worst films of 2015, the Creed uh, first movie um, was one of the movies that we highlight as a best of that era. And it's honestly a treat to know that since that first outing in the spin-off series uh, from the Rocky movies that the Creed films have found their um, their 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 niche in this area and have not only just uh, grown in, uh, you know significantly but has truly thrived and now with Creed 3 it has finally uh, took that first step into being uh, its own thing Mm -hmm. uh, its own separate corner uh, from the fr uh, Rocky franchise. And it was only wow. one mention of the Rocky character by name. Honestly, it's a blink if you miss it, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. And let me tell you right here and now, you will not miss uh, Rocky's presence in this film. Creed has proven himself, the character, the story itself, has proven that it does not need the Rocky uh, shadow to loom over it for people to recognize it for the brilliance that it is. But let's do give respect that um, the Creed movies would not be anything without the creative work by, with his creative team. Mm -hmm. But Stephelson Stallone, who still should be recognized um, as a very founder, he's basically half the creative, uh, the, half the creative force from the, the Rocky movies yes. anyway, That's not true. only being a star, but a writer and sometimes director mm -hmm. um, when he was directing it, when he was involved. But he decided to sit this one up for personal reasons that we won't be discussing. Um, Creed 3 is also a big change in the shape of ownership mm -hmm. um, that should be highlighted. That um, this is a three way um, credibility to give out. That this is a uh, Warner Brothers project that's into that they distribute internationally, worldwide. Yes. Um, this has always been an MGM AIP, but MGM is now owned by Amazon. So. <laughs> whoever wins at the box office and um, critical acclaim and awards that this film might get, it'll possibly most likely it'll, it'll probably be like a good, into a three-way three split. It's mm -hmm. a three-way split. The story is um, taking launching off as a is it dives more deeper into the background history of its titular character Adonis Creed, mm -hmm. uh, played by Michael B. Jordan. Yes. Um, for this one that is a time, a significant time jump from Creed 2 um, after him and his um, wife, um, played by Tessa Thompson, uh, she, they have their daughter and she's basically of elementary school age now mm -hmm. and he's retired after becoming the world championship. And you totally feel that, that sense of accomplishment that has already been built up on the uh, pedestal that he's um, that he has been placed upon, uh, but you also have a sense of feeling that there is a cloud um, hanging over him as well, mostly having to deal with the concept of where he had to come up from, and this has all come to um, to the surface when he is greeted, or more <laughs> likely <laughs> comes face to face with a blast from his own past. Damien. William, uh, Damien um, Anderson, played by Jonathan Majors in this film, uh, he is, used to be a, a, a well, like someone who was very close to him um, um, when they were growing up in a foster, almost like a brother, like a foster um, group home, mm -hmm. but in an abusive situation. That after a si issue that brought uh, brings him from uh, having Damien going to, to live in prison, mm -hmm. um, coming back after uh, that long period of time, is seeking to. Um, try and build a back up his career that he himself was an aspiring boxer. Yeah, uh, there is definitely a sense of uh, polar opposites, but at the same time of the man in the mirror um, aspect, uh, where you have uh, individuals who are dealing with how the curveballs that life threw at them and uniquely... Uh, challenging and inspiring um, different ways. In one sense, um, where you have Adonis who um, called literally uh, finger and toe up the mountain with the help of those who's um, in his um, 
in, in, in his corner to say this, uh, say to speak, and then you had the other uh, where his uh, where Dave had to deal with the concept of where he was at literally rock bottom, starting from really almost nothing. Like like he was like it wasn't always like it was more like a sense of loss because even though that they, they were both living in poverty at, at a short term time, Damien he was because he was an aspiring boss, he was, actually had some already some like accomplishments on that feet even at a young age. And then you have one individual where uh they are because of the, their um uh, their successes, i.e. Adonis, uh has gotten to an area where he was able to forget his past or at least try to run away from it the other one in this case being dame is completely by cannot run away from it and is it literally at the very forefront and the driving force behind his actions in this film and you see that the plot um essentially is that dame is trying to get back what he feels was is owed to him mm -hmm. and it brings back a lot of these um things that we just been discussing and um, with the over course of a very brief, like it's close to two hours, but it doesn't feel like it. <laughs> no, this film is like it goes by by the numbers. It's, it really, it's really it's really good. It's it's real pace, I would say, and, and you can and you really do feel so your own that you the get stuck up to the world. And, and in fact, I wouldn't even mind if it was a little bit longer. Yeah, honestly, yeah, <laughs> I felt as though could, it, it could have even benefited from being a little bit longer. To be honest with you, because mm -hmm. there's a few things I wish they had even dived a little even deeper into. Mm -hmm. Um, more on the characters, uh, Michael B. Jordan, who uh, basically is starring uh, since the first one. He doesn't get into the ring, into the spotlight uh, later into the film, um, because he, he does more of a, it's more of the uh, economical way of doing things. Mm -hmm. because not only he is the director of this film, but he is more of a reflective um, performance. Yes. Um, diving deep, a lot more of what makes him tick, and um, the basically the gravity of this uh, this person that he's met, like he basically thought lost uh, to time, is coming back to um, basically like cause some trouble in his life again. Yeah, so I feel as though this film takes its toll. But th those two individuals, Adonis and Dave, those are the heavy hitters uh, who are carrying the story along. But then you have other characters that are introduced in the case of uh, Felix uh, Chavez, while. Is also a, is a leeching point from um, where Adonis is at this new point of his life, um, being the new protege that he's trying to build up, uh, only ends up becoming another um, a hurdle for Dame to or an obstacle yeah, or obstacle. I would say yes, you're right. Uh, Felix Chavez, played by actual professional boxer mm -hmm. Jose Benavides Jr. Uh, you wouldn't like you wouldn't, you wouldn't know, know unless, you, would, unless they, you know in that if you are um, recognizing that world exactly like they do. This was like a lot of individuals who are put into this film. They do their job and it is done well uh -huh. so much so that it doesn't. You do not feel at all that the illusion is broken. Mm -hmm. um, going back to Damien though, uh, Jonathan Majors. 2023 is a big year for him. Mm -hmm. um, this movie come came out after Ant Man. And the Wasp of Quantum Mania, which he is the introduction of the MCU's next big bad. Yes. Um, from what I heard, <laughs> like he was a major highlight. At yeah, we didn't, we don't, we didn't. We have didn't watch well, that film. What like, phrase that I think that they gave to him? Is, yeah, is applied it, to this movie. Look, I've always been a Jonathan Majors fan. I've been a big. Uh, a fan of him since I saw him in, well, at least my first iteration with him would have been from Lovecraft Country. Uh, Lovecraft Country. I really enjoyed him in that in he series. He was really good in um, uh, the, net, the Spike Lee movie. Oh, the, 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 the Five Bloods. Yeah, the, yeah, the, the, the five, five Bloods. There you go. Oh, yeah, he played, yeah, he was really good at that. I really uh -huh, loved him in yeah. that. Uh, so, but yeah, it, so it came to know... Um, no brainer. No, no that brainer he, that, he's, that he he look. Jonathan Majors does what he's come, to, what he's always do. He he he's an outstanding actor. Like very much, uh, his performance is very much similar to uh, from a lot of his film. He, um, like a Marlon Brando. Something that I could oh, that I have to give high praise to the Creed films for so much more than I actually had, had, could give to the original Rocky films is that this series does an outstanding job to allowing the audience to feel sympathy for both sides of the uh, uh, of where you're coming from with these boxers. Very much when it came for the Bucky's um, point of view from the Rocky series, it's always, always been 
um, driven by the protagonist of Rocky Balboa. Whereas in the Creed films, yes, Creed, uh, Adonis Creed is the main protagonist of this series. But there are underdogs for uh, a lot of different spectrum. Exactly. And, and, when, and even when you're not even to talk about the underdog concept, uh, these they they do an outstanding job of letting you know that both of these boxers, uh, or at least in, in all three of the films so far, have something a, a, a fight to give in this game, mm -hmm. and I absolutely adore these movies for that reason. And a lot of the um, the people, a lot of the characters that they highlight are from underprivileged or disenfranchised groups. Mm -hmm. um, Creed's own um, Creed's own family, which is composed of his wife. Um, his wife uh, Bianca uh, Creed, mm -hmm. like Tessa Thompson. She's uh, had she's partially deaf, yep. and which that unfortunately was um, carried on over to when they had their child, Amara Creed, played by Mila Davis, uh, who was completely basically <laughs> like who actually he, he yeah, was I believe, flat it, out deaf it, it, uh, in real um, life. So uh, I. I Hands up to uh, to to these uh, films for bringing in that kind of representation because these particular uh, groups absolutely deserve to see themselves on the but, screen. But uh, not only to see themselves to see, uh, just to see themselves as representation, but this also shows great avenues of how they can uh, flourish with possible careers exactly. and very great lives that they uh, fulfilling lives that just to showcase that their, their hey, life is built up with a mosaic of different air avenues that are put together. Let's talk about what real the show stopping um, reason why people watch this. Michael B. Jordan has said he's the director of this film. That's actually this is directorial debut. Yes. And this film is directed as confident as a season pro. It really yeah, honestly I was blown away by the direct the direction of where he was uh, taking this um particular outing. Uh, wow. Uh, Ryan Coogler, he directed the first Creed after um, a brief hiatus, like a long a hiatus after Rocky. He re revitalized that film with fresh new energy, yep. a very sense of modern vibes. Yes. Stephen Staple, Stephen Cable, uh, Stephen Cable Jr., he directed Creed Two, brings in a lot more, like a lot more of a sense of more polished um, version of what um, Ryan Coogler presented in that film. Yes. And now Rocky B. Jordan, he's carrying the torch. Um, with his own unique flourishes, and that is mostly seen in, like I said, the direction of the uh, of the incredible fight sequences in this film. Uh, you totally see if you're uh, in the know on uh, on exactly on his, where he was getting his inspiration was uh, for these particular um, unique camera movement uh, 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 directions of the fight in itself. Yes, yeah, uh, the visual storytelling. It's amazing. You honestly feel as though you are in the ring with these fighters, and you're absolutely in the mindset of where they are going and how they're tact uh, they're tactively trying to take down their opponents. Yeah, this is very um, rarely, and even in most sports films, where you actually do get a sense of the technique mm -hmm. that is involved with um, what you're doing in sports wise. There's a high focus on the show, highlighting and presenting different. Fighting styles from the, everybody from all the fights that's being shown in this film. Very much uh, so. When you come breaking it down, yeah. you see where Adonis is a definitely individual who is calculated and where he's wanting to position his um, particular thrusts or, or, or movements. Where you have Dame, who is all about the uh, breaking down of a particular opponent down from uh, their weaknesses and their points. And then you have uh, 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 the, uh, the other actor, the other uh, character, uh, Felix Chavez, who is very much a character who is trying to uh, direct himself towards the vital areas where he needs to be. Each um, area, e each one of these fights, each one of these um, particular characters, you see what is driving them in these um in the ring and I have it's something you definitely have to see to believe and it honestly makes me feel as though again again we need to address for the Oscars uh, a category for choreography needs to be there another aspect of this film that I was a little bit concerned going in because there's another there's another change of um, directors so another possibly another change of um music as well mm. but thankfully uh, it was uh, like it still carry on that same type of consistency of how, how good uh, how well it is being utilized it's yeah music um look with Gurusan, he um composed for the first two films um did a wonderful great job of like bringing in fresh new sounds and themes 
uh, that has been carried over. It's still, it's still into this film, but his um, understudy or, or his assistant, Joseph Shirley, he as well brings in some, his own unique flavor that are pleasantly to hear, as well as a nice, good um, soundtrack arrangement uh, from past and modern music. So for our verdict uh, for Creek 3, I would say that this has been yet another great installment in the Rocky franchise. It's very consistent. These movies do what they're supposed to do. If anything, there is only the sky's the limit now. So we can definitely, there's multiple avenues where the series can go, and certain of them are very promising, and I'm here for it um, down the line, um, and for how long they really want um, to, to, to take this um, journey. Um, the only type of criticisms we might have for this film is that um, because they are like fleshing out this world if more so with these Creed movies, there are some more story can be done within each individual installment in themselves. Especially I would say visual storytelling can be done. Uh, they started playing with it, especially within this particular outing. Um, I need to see more of it because mm -hmm. that is something that is incredibly in, uh, um, in creative and I absolutely love it when it's executed right. <laughs> but that's it. That's our review for Creed 3. As always, uh, please like, share, and subscribe, and hit that bell down there at the bottom for notifications if you want to have more of this coming for you. Uh, my name is Adam, and this has been a Sticky Media Productions. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe, and look at our social media outlets, uh, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook for content we don't post on this channel. I'm Aaron, and that's a wrap. See ya.